Bosses of Reddit have you ever experienced an employee not showing up randomly for days on end and only to discover they died unexpectedly? How did you find out? Had a young girl working her first job with me. She was funny, sweet and popular with everyone. For the 8 months she worked under me, she was one of the best employees a boss could hope for. Always early, with a big smile, never complained, always willing to go the extra mile. A model employee. She was 15 minutes late. I sent her a text. A row late and her fellow young crew members are calling, posting to her Facebook. No response to any of us. Her shift time was over, still no word. Next day the same thing. Called her mom about 8pm that night. She hadn't heard from her either, and was obviously very upset. I tried to calm her down, said maybe she was with her boyfriend, kids being kids. She would still have a job with me when she came back around. Got a call at about 4am from one of my shift leaders and close friend of this young woman. The police found her body in a ditch between her home and our work. She was stabbed 27 times and passed away in that ditch while on her way into work. I keep a high school graduation photo she gave me in my desk. On the back she wrote him eat. Thanks for hiring me. And thanks for the cap and gown. I played for a few of the graduates regalia. Too bad you're too old to come to our. Her and the teens who work with us. Grad party. A few weeks after receiving. That picture she was gone. Her murderer is still out there. Rest in peace Courtney. I hope my new baby girl turns out. To be half the young lady you were. I'm not a boss, but I had one that didn't show up one day. She was the type of person who never called in sick, was always there. So when she was late everyone was worried. A co-worker went to her house and found her and her husband dead in their master bedroom. It was above the garage and someone sat on the remote starter for the car. The garage wasn't properly insulated and they passed away due to carbon monoxide poisoning. Apparently they just looked like they fell asleep. I decided that day two things, one, that I would never get a house with a bedroom over a garage or a remote start for my car, two, that I would be the kind of person that people instantly knew something was wrong if I didn't show up when I said I would, if they hadn't heard from me, of course. Years ago, I worked with this guy who was a Mormon, nice guy, funny, personable, easy to get along with. So one Friday afternoon we are sitting around, and I start asking him about all the weird Mormon rules, special underwear, seven levels of heaven, that kind of thing. He was really reasonable and pragmatic about it, and said if I die and that's not what the afterlife is like, I'll just go with the flow. I'm not rigid about this stuff. The next Monday he didn't show up for work. He'd been killed by a drunk driver at 5 a.m. On his way in. Spooky. We had an incident at where I work where a new hire was a no call no show no life. He was from Cleveland and moved to Columbus to take the job. He was recommended to us by another employee who was good friends with him up in Cleveland and heard he was looking for a job in our career field. He had been working for us for about a week when he didn't show for work. We tried to call him because, well it was odd for someone to not show after only being with us for a week and being close friends with another employee. His friend was very worried about him. She had called Cleveland and spoke to his mom, who had spoke to him the night before. His mother tried calling and got no answer. Worried that he might be depressed due to a domestic issue with his child, his parents called the Columbus police to do a welfare check. They went to his apartment and found him dead. His parents drove down immediately. We found out later that afternoon. His friend and I ended up having to go to his apartment to pick up his work and a company computer that was lent to him for his job. Really a sad situation. Parents should never have to bury their children. His mother was beside herself. According to the police, they determined that he drank himself to death. Alcohol poisoning. Drank a fifth of I think vodka, passed out and didn't wake up. Okay. Not four days or dead. I was a young bakery assistant manager. My manager was on vacation, which left me in charge, but shorter person. I'm the first person to arrive at 2.30 am and set everything up. The third and only other baker is supposed to come in at 3. This is my chance to prove myself and get promoted, so I'm all gung-ho. Well, 3 rolls around and he doesn't show up, in mad, basically saying all kinds of shit about him to the clerks that come in. 
4am still not here. I'm saying that sob knows how important this is to me. 5am nope not here. 6am are you kidding me? I don't call because I don't want to wake his family as he lives at home. 7am by now I'm killing myself to get shit done and calling him every name in the book. 7.30am his mom calls. He was in a car accident and is in a coma. Not sure he is going to make it. I feel like crap. Everyone makes sure to ask if I feel guilty. I'm still a manager. If someone doesn't show, I make sure to call to cat and check on them. And they nothing until I know they are okay. Can't believe I was such an ass. A key employee was missing for two days and not returning calls. So the boss sent another employee to check on him. Found him dead in his apartment. It was alcohol poisoning from 30 some years of hard drinking. Only two weeks later that employee who found him was going to the bosses to watch an car basketball tournament game. Boss didn't answer the door, but the employee could see him through a window, and he looked lifeless enough to call the police. Dead from an accidental overdose of painkillers. It was 8 years ago, and that employee is still freaked about finding them both so close together. And the joke is nobody wants to invite him over anymore, because they don't want to be the next body he finds. Not deaths, but in a similar vein. Worked at a bookstore years ago that had several missing person cases over the 6 years I was there. The first was a Brazilian woman who was there for one summer, and then got a call in the middle of the night, and told our boss she had to leave right now. We never saw her again. She never picked up her last check. Calls to her home address got this number has been disconnected. We never found out what happened. The second was later that same year. We had an older guy who was a seasonal temp. His position ended just after New Year's, and that was the last time he was ever seen. Cops came by later to take a statement. We all kind of suspected it was a suicide, but no body was ever found. Third was maybe a year after those. This lady was also a temp, and during her day off, her sister called to find out when the last time we had seen her. Cops came to ask about her too, and that was the last we saw of her for a while. She resurfaced about 3 months later, but nobody ever told us what happened. She was nice enough, but always kind of off before and after she was much quieter and even weirder we also had a girl who nst for three days and turned out to be in the hospital from a car accident and not one but two different dudes who flipped their shit about not wanting to do really ordinary tasks and ran out into downtown dc in the middle of the night my dad worked at a casino they had a very strict attendance policy this guy that was known for showing up no matter what didn't show didn't call the casino didn't ask questions and fired him. His family called and said he had died of a heart attack after they found him a few days later. The casino had fired him for a no call no show, so he no longer had life insurance through them. They refused to reinstate it because the policy states you must call in if you can't make it. That's bureaucracy for you. I wasn't the boss and it wasn't days. It was known pretty immediately that something was wrong. About 10 years ago, when I first started in the service industry, I was a hostess. One morning, I noticed a busser who had never been late, never no call slash no showed, and always checked in with me when he got to work, didn't come in. I waited a little while, tried calling him to see what was up, and his phone just rang off the hook. I finally went to my boss and I said, busser isn't here. He immediately knew something was wrong. He tried calling a few times and he actually ended up taking a server who was friends with the guy outside of work and driving to his house. They knocked but no one answered. They then noticed that a screen had been taken off of his window, so they called the police. He had been murdered the night before. It was a horrific tragedy and the entire restaurant mourned. He was the nicest friendliest guy ever, and it was just a shock to everyone in his life. I've checked up on his case recently, and it's still unsolved. My stepdad worked under me as night slash weekend security guard. One evening he didn't show up for shift change, and I just knew. I stayed on duty to cover his shift, and made some phone calls, and he was found in his bed an hour later. He had gone home after lockup the night before, and died in his sleep. It sucked. Really bad. The person I called to check on him was my mother. They had been living separately for a couple years, but were still together as a couple. I knew he was dead when I called to ask if she knew why he hadn't come to work. 
I knew he was dead when she said she was going to drive over and check on him. I knew he was dead before anyone else and I had to tell my own mother her husband of 23 years was gone. I also had a cow or pass away. She was a frequent social media poster and then one Saturday night she just stopped. I think halfway through her scheduled shift on the following Monday, someone called the police for a welfare check and found her body in her apartment. A newish employee stopped coming to work. He lived alone as his family was overseas waiting for visas to be finalized. He did not show up to work for a few days, so his manager went to the house we were renting for him, no answer to the door or phone and he could not see through the windows. We decided to get a set of keys from the company managing the house which took a few days. The manager rented the house to a horrendous smell, middle of a nosy summer, and found the guy in the bedroom with blood absolutely everywhere. The carpet had a massive pool of blood, and he was laying on the bed which was soaked through. He was clutching a towel to the back of his head. The manager had a quick look through the house, and found a heap of blood in the bathroom and some, so it appeared the guy had slipped, and hit his head, grabbed a towel to stop the bleeding, and then bled to death on the bed. Odd thing is, the guy was generally a neat person with good work standards and the house was a mess with doors open and stuff all over the floor. The police did not seem concerned by this, and the coroner passed a verdict of accidental death. It was left for us to organize cleaning the house up. When the same manager was packing up his personal stuff he found a frying pan in the lounge with a big dent on the side and a piece of flesh and hair stuck in the dented bit. Police did not think this odd, and did not investigate. I had a dispatcher, that was usually very dependable, he had a 3 day weekend planned down at his beach house. He no called, no showed for his first day back, which was very out of character. I was the sergeant on duty at the time, so I tried calling his cell and his phone home both of which went straight to voice a mail. He resided outside of our jurisdiction, so I placed a courtesy call for a well-being check. About 20 minutes later I get a phone call that they had found my dispatcher deceased inside his residence. We had one of those. I was not his direct manager, but I work in corporate hours and this general manager's location is part of my territory. He was always very reliable so, when he didn't show up as usual we tried to contact his family. He wasn't married, and had no kids. The only person on his contact card was a fairly distant relative. After not receiving a call back on his third day of absence we called the police, to do a welfare check. Apparently he had gone home the day of his last shift and committed suicide. It was really awful, but at the same time a bit touching to see hundreds of our employees attend the funeral. Even 4 years later there is still a memorial up at the branch for him. Wish he could have seen how much of an impact he had. I was GM of a convenience store, which doesn't attract the most top notch employees BC of the low pay and social perception. I had a lot of people, that I put through to hire. About 10% of the people I interviewed, that didn't work out, mainly not passing drug tests or just not bothering to show up. I had a really good interview with this young guy, that seemed to be a real achiever with a good work ethic. It's not always easy, to tell from an interview, but I had a really good feeling about this guy. It comes time for him to show up for training and he's late. Great. More time passes, and I realize he's blown me off. It surprised me BC, like I said. He really seemed like he wanted to make a brighter future for himself, but I've been through this before, so I brushed it off. Not too much time goes by when my employee brings the newspaper to me, open to the obituary page. She asks, is this the young man that was supposed to come in today? I'll never forget seeing his picture on that page and reading about the wife and children he left behind. He had just told me about his dedication to his future and now he didn't have one at all surreal. Since that day, I've made more of an effort to give people the benefit of the doubt. Not me but my dad worked with a guy who didn't show up to work for 3 days. No one heard from him, he was divorced and his kids were all grown and moved away. A cow walker went to check on him and found him wandering around his house. Turns out he'd had a stroke and hit his head. Had a lot of brain damage and he didn't know what was going on. He didn't die that day, but I do recall my dad saying he died shortly thereafter. Not a boss, but a story from my college job. One Friday afternoon a cow worker that was supposed to be working the same shift as me had her husband call in sick on her behalf. Now this was the day before she was taking a week of vacation, 
to go on a trip. Naturally my supervisor and some other coworkers assumed she called in sick to get an additional vacation day. As I found out the next day, when I went to work, apparently she had an aneurysm Friday morning, was placed in a coma, went brain dead, and the family decided to pull the plug that Saturday morning. Of course everyone that ragged on her the previous day felt terrible, as they should have. The interesting thing, is that I remember working with her on Thursday, and she was complaining of having headaches. It was very sad, she started around the same time as me, as was always nice. Here one day, and gone the next. We had a guy not turn up. He was out studio engineer at a production company. He was in his 50s, worked for us for 20 years. He was a widow, had no family close by and just a sister he spoke to on the phone occasionally. He'd gone home feeling unwell on Friday. He didn't turn up on Monday. We sent the police round, and they found him dead in his bed. He'd self-medicated with some paracetamol and a bottle of barley wine, and died in his sleep of pneumonia. Lovely funny wonderful man. Rip Bob. His funeral was attended entirely by the staff of the company, who all loved him. It featured classic rock and barley wine. I'm not a boss, but I had something like that happen. I was working an overpass 10 hour shift on a semi trailer truck lot. It was the kind, where you basically brought the biggest book you could find, your lunch and made your rounds in the company car. The guy who I relieved I'd never met before, but I said hi as he drove off in his vehicle. Anyway, end of the shift and no one relieves me. I call in repeatedly, letting them know the dude hasn't shown up. Something like 8 hours pass, then almost to point I'll be relieving him. Still nothing. I finally go in, and yell at my dispatcher, who yells right back at me, that the other officer had shot himself. A family member had found him dead, but they didn't have anyone to cover the shift. So I ended up working about a whole day. I never did find out his name or even catch a proper glimpse of his face. Security is a really crappy, depressing job to begin with. I'm glad I don't do it anymore.